Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Side. I'm the dork in the road and today I want to talk all about why I bought this 2022 Kawasaki KLR650. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet writing buddy so please consider subscribing. This is my brand new 2022 Kawasaki KLR650 Adventure. I picked it up about a week ago and I'm loving it, loving it, loving it so far. A lot of thought went into the decision to buy the new KLR650, a lot of reasoning, a lot of processing, and I'd like to share, as promised, some of those reasons with you. I know a lot of you have questions. I'm gonna start with the stuff about the bike and then I'll move into the stuff that's more YouTube channel specific that maybe is less interesting to people that are just wondering whether or not they should pick up a KLR650. So first of all, the first reason why I bought this KLR650, and if you saw my test ride video, which I will link for you, you knew this already, but I had a great time test riding it. I was incredibly surprised with how fun it was to ride. Coming from an Africa Twin with a lot more power, twice the horsepower, more than twice the horsepower, I was expecting to be underwhelmed. I've heard all these things about how the KLR is a slow, soft, squishy pig and isn't fun to ride and when I got on that thing and started tearing up a gravel road that was not what I felt at all. A bike that performed really well on the gravel roads when I was test riding it and a bike that was just kind of fun to ride in more of a slow bike ridden fast way than the, the Africa Twin where it's a, this has lots of power holy crap sometimes you use all of it sometimes you won't weigh. Uh, it just is a really fun bike to ride and it was very confidence inspiring and I think that was a huge thing for me too. Probably the thing I like the least about my Africa Twin is how heavy it feels not when you're moving it doesn't feel super heavy when you're riding it but moving it around the garage trying to turn around on a narrow forest road uh, any kind of slow speed kind of maneuvering stuff, particularly turning it around, but it, it feels heavy, unwieldy. It's so hard to wheel around in a way that's hard to explain unless you've experienced it yourself. And this did not feel that way. Even though on paper it's only about 50 pounds lighter, it feels way, way lighter, easier, and more manageable. Some of you didn't believe it when I said it in the test ride video, but riding it at those slow speeds and doing that kind of turning around slow speed stuff feels more like my DRZ than my African Twin. It made me feel confident in the area of off-road riding that I'm least confident in, and that was a big deal to me and so that was one reason why, why a light kind of went on in my head I was like hmm this is a bike I should maybe consider this is a bike that I'm gonna be willing to take into more uncharted territory not knowing if I go up a hill climb or you know down this abandoned road if I'm gonna have to stop because there's a log in the road and figure out a way to turn it around I'm just gonna be way more comfortable and confident on this bike than I will be on my Africa Twin and I feel like it's a bike that really fits me as a rider I am NOT an adrenaline junkie guy. I'm a let's go explore and I'd like to get there comfortably but if you think about it, like tires like I would much rather have a knobbier tire that I'm gonna wear out and is a little bit less comfortable on the road but no I'm gonna have everything I need to get through whatever I encounter off-road than a real true 50-50. I will, I will sacrifice on-road performance all day. I want to know that bike is as competent as possible off-road in all the situations I'm gonna encounter. And so I, I'm more than willing to give up some highway performance to make that happen. You know, what's more dork in the road than a KLR? Like, I'm all about the, I'm all about the entry level, I'm all about the inspiring new people to get in, and this is the, well, many people's first adventure bike. And it's just weird that I don't have any experience with one. It just screams dork in the road. I don't get anywhere fast. You know, I like to have fun when I can, but it's more about getting out and seeing stuff uh, and getting there eventually, and that that's the KLR in a nutshell. But another big consideration that maybe some of you shopping for bikes don't have is that um, I'm a YouTuber. I make adventure and off-road motorcycling YouTube content, and it's actually my job now. This is what I do full-time. And so on that score, a KLR 650, particularly a 2022, makes a lot of sense. This is a bike this new model with the fuel injection that there's a lot of interest around. And if you don't believe me, just go look at the first two day performance of my two videos that I have out so far. My KLR test ride and my review video have 15,000 views combined right now in the first three days since the test ride video and the first day since the reveal video. There is a lot of interest in this bike and there aren't a lot of people making content on it beyond a test ride first impressions review. Uh, a lot of the major media publications kind of did that and then just moved on. But there's only a couple people really making content on this bike and so what it does is it opens up my content to a whole new audience, right? Not just the people interested in the new KLR but also KLR people. Same thing happened when I bought my DRZ. It opened me up to a, a wide audience so it makes sense channel-wise for me to be making content on a new hot bike that not many people are making content on. That was enough to push me over the top after the test ride that I really like so much 
to getting this bike. It just makes sense for the channel. It's an opportunity to do a build on a bike that companies are coming out with new parts for, that people are buying and wondering how to mod up, so I can help people with that as I kind of trial and error things and they can at least get ideas from what I do. It's an opportunity to partner with Rocky Mountain ATV, again, who is going to be a great sponsor on this build. Got stuff coming from them that I'm going to put on this, so it's an opportunity to do that and kind of show people what kind of parts and pieces you can put on it and how to set it up for the kind of riding that I like to do at least. Here's the other thing. From the perspective of a person whose job it really is, is to help people navigate the transition from I kind of want to start riding off-road to I'm riding off-road, there is no clearer, more direct path for a new rider than this KLR 650 Adventure. This bike, with the exception of maybe real handguards, because these are just deflectors, is literally turnkey, ready to go on your first adventure the day you pick it up from the dealership. Crash bars, has a plastic skid plate, but it'll get you through, you know, what kind of stuff that newer riders will do. It's got bags, you know, it's highway capable, it's got decent off-road tires. $8,000 out the door and you're on your first adventure. That literally cannot be beat. There is no cheaper way, other than used, obviously, but there's no cheaper new bike way to walk into a dealership and walk out with a bike that you can ride on an adventure right then than this KLR 650 adventure. It is the ultimate beginner adventure bike. On that score, it makes a lot of sense for me to have one and kind of be helping people see that and, and also to test it out and make sure that while I believe that now, is that actually true? And the only way to know that is to have one and own it for a while. I also just want to be someone who has experience with multiple bikes. I think, you know, people ask me for recommendations a lot and I want to be giving good ones. And it's hard to do that based on just test rides. It makes more sense for me to have owned and ridden and adventured on and, and dealt with the trials and tribulations and dropped and broken and modded multiple bikes as much as I can. I've always sort of suggested the KLR 650, but now I will have real hands-on experience when it comes time to recommend bikes to people. And I just think that makes a lot of sense for the kind of channel I want to be, for the kind of advice and recommendations I want to be able to give and help I want to be able to give people. And it just makes sense for me as a YouTuber to be moving through different bikes. It makes sense for me to have a new bike every once in a while. So I want to trial and error things and save you troubles along the way. I want to figure out if a bike is worth your time or not so that you don't waste your time and money on it. That's part of what I see as my job. And so it makes sense for me as a YouTuber to own and ride and adventure on different bikes. Even if maybe the transition between what you have and what you're getting doesn't make sense from a is it an upgrade perspective? Which leads me to the question that several of you have asked, which is what happens to the Africa Twin? I'm fully aware that the KLR 650 is not an upgrade from the Africa Twin all across the board. I do think it is better in some situations, but across the board, especially for like the kind of trip I just got back from, a 600 mile, you know, there was two hours of freeway to get there and two hours of freeway to get back uh, with a lot of off-road stuff in between. Yes, the Africa Twin makes more sense, but because of all the reasons I just said, right, I want to make content on this, I want to be constantly working through bikes, I want to be able to give people good recommendations, and the fact that I don't have enough room in my garage or my budget for two bikes with two payments, because, again, lots of comments about, man, how do you buy all these bikes? Uh, I'm not rich, I, especially now that I gave up my well-paying job to kind of try to make my living on YouTube. It's all about a good credit score and a, an ample available credit and bad financial decisions. So. I cannot carry two payments and I do not have room for both bikes in my garage and so the Africa Twin unfortunately is going to get sold. I have to sell it. I don't want to sell it. It's not because I don't like it or because it doesn't do what I want it to do. I just got back from that trip where we did the most heinous off-road riding I've ever done on it. Some stuff that I would classify as solidly intermediate, you know, washouts, ro rocks, technical stuff, like a really amazing section of that stuff that I'd never taken a big bike on before and that thing just took everything I could throw at it and kept on chugging. It's a great bike and I hope it goes to a great home. Nothing against the AT except for the fact that it's super heavy and unwieldy when I'm trying to wheel it around. And, and, and that annoys me and that yeah, actually intimidates me, to be honest. Other than that, it's a great bike that I've been very happy with, but there just isn't room for both. So the AT, unfortunately, is it's going to go on the market. So if you're interested, I mean, I'd love to see it go to a subscriber. I would make you a much better deal than what I'm going to put it up on Facebook Marketplace for. But I'm going to clean her up and sell her and she will not be in the garage forever. I can always get another one in the future, but for all the reasons I just said, moving forward on the KLR, and it, it needs to be my only adventure bike for me to truly experience it. How am I gonna understand the trials and tribulations of a KLR owner when I can just hop on my Africa Twin anytime I have to go on the freeway? It just doesn't make sense. It makes more sense to really get the full experience of the KLR being my adventure bike, and that's what I'm gonna do. So, I can hear you, you know, you're not gonna be happy with that KLR forever. 
And you know what? Maybe not. I could see reaching its limitations, which I will never be able to do on the Africa Twin. It's always going to be a better bike than I am as a rider. But it is possible that I will become as good a rider as this bike is capable and at some point want more. But if I'm being perfectly honest with you, the KLR is not the bike I wanted. The bike that I want, that I feel like is perfect for me, that solves my issues with the Africa Twin's weight without losing any of the highway capability that I'm going to be losing with this bike is the Tenere 700. But they're impossible to get a hold of. And even if you do find one, they're selling for more than retail. And I refuse to pay more than $10,000 for one. And the dealership that I talked to has got a, a waiting list 50 people long. So there's no telling when they'll come in. So in the interim, until I can get my hands on a Tenere, which I think is going to be a great bike for me eventually, I'm going to enjoy the hell out of this KLR 650. Until either the Tenere 700 becomes available or Honda actually releases the much-rumored Transalp 850. And if that's the case, a smaller Africa Twin, I will pre-order that shit and buy it day one. Did you hear me, Honda? Probably not, because you don't watch my stuff, but get that Transalp 850, get me a smaller Africa Twin, a 450-pound Africa Twin, and let's talk. I'm buying that right away. But for now, I'm really excited about the KLR. I'm really excited about the content I can make on the KLR. I'm really excited to take it out and really show people what they can do with the KLR, show people that you don't need a $20,000 adventure bike to go out and have adventures. I think the skeptics are going to be surprised by what it can do, and I think the people that know know exactly what it's going to be able to do and uh, and they're just going to nod their heads like this. Thank you for all the support so far by the way. I feel like I've really been welcomed into the KLR community already. Speaking of the KLR community, there is one persistent question I have to answer and that is are you going to do the doohickey? I thought the DRZ people were like enthusiastic about do the 3x3 and rejet, do the 3x3 and rejet, but I've gotten three times as many doohickey comments since I posted that reveal video than I did on the DRZ about the 3x3. So the doohickey, there's a sort of persistent flaw in the KLR design with a cam chain tensioner. So there's a replacement you can do and they just call it the doohickey, for those of you that are unfamiliar. And everyone says you gotta do the doohickey because if you don't, it'll fail and your motor will blow up. My plan for the doohickey, just to put it to rest, to, to answer the question is, this bike is under warranty for a year. I'm not gonna open the engine while it's under warranty. One, because it'll avoid my warranty, and two, because if it does fail, they'll just fix it. After that, I'll think about it. But for now, for the first year, I'm not going to do that till next September because my bike is covered if it does fail. And you know, you guys know I'm not a big mechanic guy, but I, it seems doable. I could probably do it. But I'm just going to ride the hell out of this thing for a year while it's under warranty and then we'll figure it out. So if you have other questions about the KLR, about my reasoning why I bought a KLR, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Again, thank you for all the support on the reveal video and all of that. Much appreciated. And I'm looking forward to riding the crap out of this thing and making lots of content on it. And I hope that you guys are too. Thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other.